Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. I don't know if you've seen this pattern yet. It is adorable. It's called the Granny Fanny. It is a crossbody bum bag available on yarnspirations.com. It's a free pattern and I just loved it. There were just a couple of things I wanted to change about it so that I knew it was perfect for me and for anybody else I might be gifting it to. I added an adjustable strap so that I know it's going to fit any body and in addition to adding in the zipper, my machine sewed mine so it's very secure, and I added a lining so that I know nothing's gonna fall out through my little crocheted holes. I gotta have my Carmex with me at all times. I don't know about anybody else. I assume other people have things too that are small that they have to have on their person at all times. So I wanna show you how to make these adorable bags, add a lining, add an adjustable strap. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when new patterns and projects come out. So here's what you're going to need for supplies. You need the portion of your bag that is crocheted and I have finished mine. This is the start of my third row of edging and I'm going to show you here how to attach some of the pieces. So you need this part done through the second row of edging. So in order to finish it, you will obviously also need your crochet hook. I'm using an H five millimeter hook. You will also need two D rings, one inch in size. So this portion here is one inch wide. You'll need a 12 inch zipper. This is the zipper that was recommended on Repeat Crafter Me on the tutorial for the Granny Fanny itself, but I'll put a link in the description box for these zippers just because they're really fun and there's some really cool colors. You're also going to need one fourth of a yard of 100% cotton fabric. You'll need two swivel snap hooks. You can see this is what they look like inside the package. I got these from Hobby Lobby. And these are also one inch in size, this portion right here. You will need 54 to 60 inches, depending on how big you wanna make your adjustable strap, but you need, that's a, that's a pretty good measurement from 54 to 60 inches of one inch wide webbing. This is nylon webbing. Um, they also sell like a seatbelt webbing that looks a little different, or you can do one inch wide cotton webbing, which this that's what this is. They're both in black. Any of it will work. You'll need a one inch slide adjuster. This is also called a tri-glide or an adjustable slide buckle. And sometimes this middle piece, this center piece is attached and doesn't move. That would work just as well. It's a little bit easier to create your strap if this part is adjustable, but other than that, they work exactly the same. One inch wide, I believe I said that. <laughs> You're also going to need some sewing pins. This is my cute little hedgehog pin cushion that came with the sewing pins. So you have sewing pins. Um, optionally, you could also use, in addition, you will need these either way, but you, for one section of this, it might be a little easier to use clips if you happen to have any sewing clips. You're also going to need some sewing scissors, and you'll need a fabric marking marker, pen, whatever you have, pencil. You're also going to need one sharp needle and some matching thread, matching to your bag, the, the main body color. And optionally, a lighter, which I'm going to use to burn the ends of my webbing just so it doesn't fray. You're also going to need a sewing machine. So to start, I'm gonna be attaching the D-rings to the crocheted portion of the bag itself. So the D-ring looks like this. And what I've done so far, there are three rounds that you were supposed to do as an edging. And I've already done two. I've done the initial one and then the colored one right here all the way around. The one difference that I, the one thing I did differently is the pattern calls for you to attach your yarn for these edging rounds on the ends, on one of the ends, you're supposed to attach the yarn. 
I did that with the first bag I made and to be honest, it made it harder later and I don't really see an advantage to joining it there versus somewhere else. So I joined my yarn for the rounds at the back. This is gonna be the back of my bag, just at one of these seams. And you can see where I already have one round, two rounds, and I've started the third round right there. So in order to attach the D-rings, we're gonna put those over here on the ends. The end, see this is the front, actually this is the back of my bag, and over here is one of the ends. I want it to be centered right here. So I'm gonna to refer to this right here as the peak because it kind of goes up like a mountain peak like this. And I wanna put my D-ring here with five single crochets attaching it. So I've crocheted my third round up to this point right here and I'm going to do two single crochets before the peak. I'm trying to make sure I've got the peak here. Actually I'm going to pull this out. So I'm going to do two single crochets before the peak. The peak itself right here in the middle kind of you can see right here this is the middle stitch and then two more after it just so it's centered. So I'm just going to grab my D-ring like this and I'm going to crochet over the flat part not the rounded part right here is where I'm going to be putting my stitches so I'm just going to hold it against the inside of the bag right here I'm going to go into the loops like normal I'm going to go under that bar I'm going to pick up a loop and pull it through the bar and the stitch so now I've got my two loops on and the yarn has gone through the d-ring and my bag, I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So that's just one of the five I want to do. So now I'm going to go under these next two stitches right here like this, under the D-ring again. I'm going to pick up a loop. I have two loops on, yarn over and pull through. That's two. This next one is going to be the peak. This is the peak of my little mountain here. It's the middle of these five stitches. I'm also just going to go underneath both the D-ring and the loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to do that two more times. And you can move the D-ring over so that it's a little easier to work with. It shifts around. And um, now I have this part done. It just looks like single crochets there, but you can see I've attached this D-ring and it's pretty secure because it has five single crochets holding it in place. So that's the first D-ring. And I'm going to finish this round, my third round, just like normal. I'm going to go all the way around until I reach this side where I am once again going to crochet over the D-ring, my second D-ring. I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to do the two stitches before the peak, the peak itself, and the two stitches after. And then complete my round and slip stitch to the beginning. So now that I've attached the D-rings at both ends, I'm going to start making the lining. So what I need to do is take my fourth of a yard of fabric and I'm going to flip it the other way so that the wrong side is out. The right sides are going to be together and I want to have it folded in half so that when I do this, I can cut through both layers of fabric at the same time. So I want it to be big enough that my whole bag fits onto the lining, which it does just like this. And I'm going to use my fabric marker to trace around the bag itself. Now you could add a fourth of an inch onto, you know, your tracing so that you have a seam allowance. But honestly, I think it's easier to put a bag lining inside if it's slightly smaller than the bag itself. That way it's not bunching and clumping up on you. So I'm not going to add a seam allowance to this. I'm just going to trace around the bag itself. So being careful not to get any marker on my bag, I'm just going to trace around the outside. So once you have your super messy, drunken looking line drawn, well, maybe yours won't be so drunken. And I'm gonna grab my little hedgehog here with my pins and I am just gonna pin the two layers of fabric together so that when I cut, they're not shifting around so that everything stays together and is exactly the same. Once you have it pinned, it's time to cut it out. 
So I'm gonna use my fabric scissors. I'm just gonna cut this chunk over here to get this out of my way, make it a little easier. And I'm just gonna cut along my drunken marker line here. Now, honestly, when I get to this part, you have the bumps from where your bag is. It's a little easier to have this just be straight. So you can use a rotary cutter and just cut straight across. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And instead of doing all my peaks and valleys here like this, I'm just gonna make it a straighter cut. And like I said, it's not, it doesn't have to be precise because you're not gonna notice it once you get into the bag. Once you have it cut out, the next step is to take out your pins because you're done with those for now. Now we need to find the center of this so that we can center our zipper on it. So I'm going to fold it in half. Right here at your midpoint, I'm gonna take some little snips, not my big scissors, just because I don't wanna to cut too big a hole. And you're just gonna cut the tiniest of little snips right there. And all that does is mark the center for you. Right there is your center. So that's, we're gonna use that in a minute here. You also need to find both of the um, centers for, for each side of the zipper. So one side and the other. So I'm gonna line up my ends and just kind of pinch over here. And I'm going to just once again, make the tiniest of little snips on both sides. On each side, I should say. Oof, yeah, okay. And that gives you your centers. So now I'm gonna take one side of my fabric lining. I'm gonna lay it right side up. So the pretty side up. And I'm going to lay my zipper also right side up. So this, the right side is gonna be the side that has your zipper pull on it. I'm gonna line my two center areas up, those two little notches, and I'm just gonna clip along this edge to hold it in place while I'm sewing. So I'm ready to take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna do a, a 1 4th inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start and end at the zipper stops. So right here where they've put these things in that are supposed to stop your zippers right here on this end and right over here. I'm gonna start by um, opening up my zipper so I can get to this part over here. And I'm just gonna do a 1 4th inch seam allowance right here where I've clipped my zipper and my lining. I'm gonna be using a light blue thread as I sew this, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see it. But you would probably want to use a thread that matched your zipper more or your fabric, just so it would be a little more invisible. So once again, just a fourth of an inch over, I'm gonna sew the zipper to the fabric. Start at the stopper, I'm gonna end at the other stopper. I just backstitched. You know, when you get to the zipper pull itself, it's easiest to stop with your needle in, lift up your foot, and then get the zipper out of your way so that you can continue on. So now I have my zipper attached to one side of the lining fabric. There's my stitch like this. And what I'm gonna do is kind of top stitch it. I'm gonna flip the fabric over like this so you can see the right side of the fabric and the top of the zipper. You could iron this, that would make it a little bit easier to do this next step, but I tend to just kind of pull on my fabric, pull it straight as I'm doing this. I'm gonna run a line of stitches right down here and it's gonna catch this fabric and it's gonna attach it to this little piece of zipper in the back like this. It's gonna, it's gonna hold it in place so that your fabric doesn't get caught in your zipper as you're opening and closing it. So what I have is the pretty side of the fabric. And then if you were looking at the inside of your bag, see here's the zipper on the top. And then if you were to open it up, you would see the lining. To sew the second half of the lining on, I'm going to take it and put it right side down. You want rights to rights. So this is the, the right side of the fabric, the pretty side. And so is this, and I want them together. And I'm going to line up my center marks from my zipper and my fabric again and clip along the zipper. 
so that I can attach the other side of the lining to the other side of the zipper. So I've got this side all pinned. I'm gonna flip it over and sew it on this side just so that I can see both sides. I can see my fabric and my zipper. And you can see this, see this is the one I'm sewing on here in the back. And I'm gonna just sew another 1 4th of an inch here in. I'm gonna start at the stopper and end at this stopper over at the other end. I'm gonna top stitch along this seam. So I've just opened it up. I'm looking at the back side of the zipper and I'm just going to start over here. Actually, I'm gonna unzip it because I can't get past that zipper pull. You could put on a zipper foot for this. I don't like putting on my zipper foot. <laughs> I'm lazy. Let's just be honest. That's what it is. It's laziness. Okay, so I'm going to start at the stopper again, and I am once again going to kind of pull this fabric over here to the right so that I know it's not bunched up underneath. I want to have it straight and even. And I'm just going to sew right next to the zipper tape itself. <laughs> So here we have the lining and this is the top with your zipper and the pretty sides are inside and what I'm going to do next is line up the sides as best I can and I'm going to attach them so it actually makes the pocket. So there's my top edges and I'm just going to go along and clip all of this together because that's what I want to sew next. Don't sew these little end tabs from your zipper, leave those alone, but I'm going to sew right here next to it and then around the bottom back up this side and over to here but once again not catching the zipper ends so i'm just going to sew one fourth of an inch around that whole thing now that i've pinned it so of course i'm going to start and then back stitch and then go around this corner if you just go slow and kind of turn 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 as you are sewing Get around the corner and then it's a little bit easier because it's straighter. Okay, so here's my pouch with the zipper at the top. That's the inside and it's sewn all the way around the sides. It's time to stick it into the crocheted portion, the bag itself. So I'm going to put it in and push it down to the bottom. And now I'm going to clip it in place so that I can sew it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up my teeth here of the zipper with the colorful second round of edging. That way it's kind of recessed, like from the front you won't see the zipper, but it gives me something to aim for as I'm clipping it in place. So I'm just going to do that and I find it easiest to, so I've, this is like the front maybe or the back doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to flip it over and pin it on the opposite side. I like to do this kind of in opposites at first, the first part of the pinning process. So see, I'm still lining up the teeth with my um, colorful second round. So I'm just going to keep going around, lining up the zipper teeth not like that. I'm going to line it up with my second row and just clip in place. And the ends will not reach all the way necessarily to the end. You're not going to sew all the way across here. I'm going to sew to this end and then I'm going to start over here on this side and sew over. So there's a little bit of a gap between the lining and this extra part, which will make it easier to sew because you do not want to sew over your D-ring. So once you get it all pinned, it's ready to take to the sewing machine and I am going to switch to a white thread in my sewing machine, just so you don't see it on the front, hopefully. So I'm going to begin sewing the lining in here. Like I said, this part over here on the end is left a little bit open. We're going to take care of that later. And what I'm going to aim for is pretty much right above my line here, right above my top stitch line. And what that should do is catch the zipper and also go right about here so that my white doesn't show up in my colored part. And sometimes because it's yarn, I kind of have to gently pull on the bag or push it. I'm pushing it right now with my left hand to get it to go through the machine. 
And along the way, just make sure your zipper hasn't shifted around. I don't want to see my zipper, so I just want to make sure that, you know, it's below my stitches, my crochet stitches. When you get to the other end, you just have to sew as much as you can before you're going to hit your zipper. And then I'm going to back stitch. And I'm done with this side. And this is the side I just sewed. And you can kind of see the little indent maybe where underneath there where I sewed it, but you can't, you don't notice it at all. It's hidden completely and totally, and it's very secure. You can also hand stitch this if you're good at that. I despise hand stitching, so I will avoid it at all costs. And I feel like personally, at least for me, this is a lot more secure. So I'm gonna machine stitch. If you want a hand stitch, go for it. Knock yourself out. And I'm gonna start on the other side, same exact process, but I'm beginning from, well, I'm just beginning from the other end. So yeah, same exact process. I'm gonna line my zipper teeth up and I'm gonna get as close as I can to the end. This is as close as I can get with my foot, with my you know sewing machine foot. So I'm just gonna go down right here And so the other side. So at this point, your lining is actually in. It's actually secured, and you should test out your zipper, make sure it works and it's not catching anything because you do not want to move on to the next step without checking that. But look how awesome. It's lined. It's beautiful. I think this is just fantastic. I love this pattern. So I'm going to close this most of the way. And now this end part that's kind of open with all your pieces, we're going to secure that just a little bit. So I have a sharp needle and I've attached some matching thread to it. I put both ends of my thread into my needle. And what I'm gonna do is go over here. I'm gonna go into a part of my crochet that is this color so you don't see it. So I'm gonna go to this top part. I'm gonna go into the crochet. I'm gonna go into one of these little zipper tab things here past the stopper. I'm gonna go through both sides of my lining and back into another zipper tab and then into the crochet part once again not the part not the blue part because then you would see it so i'm just going to attach all of those layers together i'm going to pull this but not all the way through i want to leave a loop over here on the end so i can knot it coming back the other way so now i'm going to come back through it's the same all the same layers i did before catch all of them and then come back out the other side and before pulling it totally tight, I am going to put my hook through that loop so that it forms a knot. And now I'm just going to go back and forth a few times that exact same way through all those layers of fabric just to make sure that they're secured so that my lining end is not going to be floating around and getting in my way when I unzip and anything. So, oops. So now I feel like I've got it secure. So I'm going to go through one more time, but leave loop over here on the end don't pull that all the way through and I want to come back through and then put my needle through the loop and pull it and that'll knot it sometimes I like to weave the end in a little bit just like we would with crochet just so that it's really secure and I'm gonna turn that off and now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side just to secure all of these layers I just want to finish up the bag portion by closing these ends over here so that you don't see the end of your lining or the end of your zipper tape. So I've cut about 24 inches of yarn, the same yarn that I used on the body of my bag. I'm going to use my darning needle and I'm just going to stitch this closed. So get your D-ring out of the way. You want to make sure that that doesn't end up inside when you stitch it closed because you need that for your strap. And I'm just going to go underneath the loops on one side. And I'm going to go to the other side and just go underneath the loops on that side, the opposite side. I'm going to leave a bit of a tail over here because I'm going to knot this when I come back through here. I'm going to go back or go into the stitch next to it and under the stitch next to my original. I am going to knot this at this point because otherwise I will pull it through on accident. And now I just need to go back and forth underneath the loops on both sides. 
until I have as much as I want closed up, closed up. I'm gonna go, I think, to the zipper stop to here. So I'm gonna stitch up to there so I can hide all of this. And now that I've gotten to my zipper stop, I'm gonna come back probably the whole length of the way just to do double stitches, make sure it's really good and secure and that it completely hides any of the, the zipper tape end or my fabric lining end over here. So when I get back to where I started, I am going to knot my threads again. Whoops. And you've got your D-ring out. Obviously that's hugely important or you won't be able to hang a strap from it. So now I'm just gonna weave in the ends on this side and then I'm gonna do the other side and attach that one as well. So with your bag done, we've got the lining like this. You've got your zipper in, it looks fantastic. You have your D-rings ready to go. It's time to make the strap. So we're gonna begin making the strap at this point. If you have a wrong side, if there's like a pattern on one side of your webbing or whatever you're using, then you want that to be face down. Mine doesn't have a right side or wrong side, doesn't really matter, but you would want wrong side up at this point. So we are gonna begin working with the slide adjuster. We're gonna bring it through the right side. We're gonna loop it around and bring it down through the left side like this. So you have a loop, see? You do that and you're going to pull it through about an inch and what you want to do at this point is take this over to your sewing machine and sew across here a number of times now if you have a contrasting thread or anything like that keep in mind that you will be able to see the back side of this as the cross as the strap is on so you want to make this look pretty <laughs> you want it to be somewhat attractive but you do need to secure it a number of times because this is going to take all the weight on it and you want to make sure it is really secure so i've attached this end now i'm going to work on the other end so i'm going to grab my other raw end over here with the back side still up so if you had you know a back side this is my back side where i've stitched it so i want to make sure that i get to the back side over here on the other end so I'm going to take this for the second end that I've been working on here. I'm going to thread on one of these swivel snap hooks. You just kind of get that to the middle. Well, not the middle, but just on a little ways. So you're going to bring your right side, your second side over here to where you have this part stitched. I like to hold it like this a little bit so you can see it from the side. I'm going to go down the right side and I'm going to come back up the left side. So just like that, you see it from the side and this is going to make it adjustable. So now we want to pull this and make sure it's not twisted or tangled. So that's our adjustable part. And over here we have one of our swivel snap hooks. And the end, the second end that I've been working with, it hasn't been stitched yet. We are going to put on the second swivel snap hook. And we're going to fold that end to the back. And once again, give ourselves about an inch, maybe a little bit more and you're going to go stitch this back and forth so that it's secured. Once you've stitched that close, what you end up with is this. You have two swivel snap hooks and then an adjustable part here in the middle, making this you know, wearable for pretty much anyone. So all you need to do at this point is clip your snap hooks onto the D-rings from your bag I like to have the little rounded parts up, clip it on, and it's done. It looks awesome. I love it. Oops, maybe not that thing. I don't love that thing, but I love everything else about it. With an adjustable strap and a cute lining, 
I think this is just the perfect bag. And I feel like making a million of them. I hope you do too. Happy crafting.